Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. Today on Frontline Rejects, we are introducing a new cartridge, which will allow us to test projectiles in a new bore diameter. 280 Ackley Improved utilizes 7mm or .284 diameter projectiles, and we're very excited to be able to add this as an addition to our lineup. We'll be testing quite a few more bullets in the future in this diameter, and the bullet that we'll be testing today is Spears 145 grain Grand Slam. This is the first time we've featured the Grand Slam here on the channel. We're very excited to see how it's going to perform. We hope you are as well, so let's get started. As previously mentioned, this is our first time running 7mm bullets here on the channel, which we have been looking forward to for some time. This is also our first time testing Spears Grand Slam projectiles, and so far we've been quite impressed with their hot core bullet. And starting off, I gotta say these Grand Slams seem to be very well made. Spear bullets are some of the most economically priced hunting bullets on the market, and with that comes perhaps not the most aerodynamic profile or any bells and whistles. But in many circumstances, most hunters don't necessarily need much more than a flat base a lead soft point that reliably opens up and holds together upon impact. And in this initial test, the Spear Grand Slam delivered that at all ranges fired. Estimated impact velocities were calculated today using JBM ballistic software. At 100 yards, we achieved just about perfect mushrooming. The projectile peeled back evenly on all sides. At 200, the expansion isn't quite as even and does discernibly end higher up the shank, but this is still a very good result. 300 is very similar to the two. We have good expansion from our lead soft soft point with excellent jacket and core retention. 400 starts to look a bit jagged compared to the earlier ranges. We don't have as much pancaking as we start to shed speed. And we round out at 500 as we drop below an estimated impact velocity of 2,000 feet per second with the 
35 looking quite similar to the 4. Moving on to our graphs from 100 to 400 yards, we have expansion staying fairly consistent within the 1.9 to 2.1 ish range. At 500 yards, expansion drops to 1.6 as we dip to an estimated impact velocity just below 1900 feet per second. This gives us average expansion of 1.95, darn near two times original size, which is an excellent result. Weight retention is extremely consistent at 100 with an impact velocity approaching 2850. We lose around 26% of our weight, giving us 107.5 grains retained out of 145. This steadily increases at each range fired exactly as we'd expect it to, leading to average weight retention of 82.9%, which is just trailing the average weight retention of some premium bonded bullets we've tested. And we get this figure because of how well the Grand Slam stayed together, which is a result of the manufacturing process employed by Spear when they produced the hot core and Grand Slam projectiles. Most cup and core bullets are produced by inserting or swaging a lead core into a copper jacket, but the Grand Slam is made by pouring molten lead into a preformed copper jacket. This in theory eliminates voids and allows a stronger bond between the core and jacket, which seems to be true as we've seen from our testing of both the hot core and Grand Slam so far. To clarify, this isn't a true bonded core design like an AccuBond or Terminal Ascent. Rather, it seems to be an improved cup and core style bullet, which does a great job of staying in one piece, but does really need velocity to open up effectively, and in doing so impart energy to the target. I would not personally run heavy for caliber Grand Slams, rather I think using a lighter bullet in a given cartridge would be the way to go. For instance, if I was loading these into my 30-06, I would run 150s or maybe 165s on the top end, but I wouldn't select 180 or 200s for the chambering as I feel it would inhibit the range I would want to take shots at. But if an informed shooter selects an appropriately weighted bullet, which is then driven at a higher speed, I think the Grand Slam would be a fine option for hunting larger game like elk and bear, as it does a good job of carrying weight and staying together, allowing it to punch deep. Now the Grand Slam is a traditionally figured lead soft point, which doesn't boast the highest BC, but it doesn't need to, as with how tough this bullet is, I don't think it shines at long range. I think this bullet would really stand out when loaded into a spicier cartridge employed at closer range. The Grand Slam really harkens back to the days of Magnum cartridges designed before the era of laser rangefinders in which the goal was to produce very fast and flat trajectories while keeping shots within 300 yards. But even though it does, I think it's still relevant today. A lot of hunters don't need super aerodynamic projectiles with high dollar price tags. If you're planning on hunting in the woods and won't be shooting past a few hundred yards, depending on what your rifle's chambered in, the very economically priced Grand Slam may be right for you. Of course, we will be running the Grand Slam in a variety of other calibers in the future, and we hope you'll join us then. To make sure you don't miss out, hit the subscribe button, and if you've got something useful out of today's content, consider liking or dropping a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.